Okay, pet parents, so we want to talk about Giardia, huh? Well, this is a little bit of a crappy topic, but I'm willing to speak about it, so let's serenade them into it, Piscotti. <laughs> Now don't confuse this with Jardinier, which is a hot pepper mixture, but for those of you that are unaware, Giardia is a flagellated protozoan parasite. Now protozoa just means it's a single-celled organism, and parasite is, well, it's a parasite. Keep up with me here, people. Flagellated means that this thing has a tail, but at the end of the day, Giardia is just an intestinal parasite that gives pets, and people for that matter, the Hershey squirts. And now the gross thing about this parasite is it's contracted by ingesting something like soil, food, or water that's been contaminated with fecal material from another creature that's already infected with the parasite. So basically pets and people get this by eating poop. There are two different forms of these butt butter causing little buggers. There's the cyst form, which is the very resilient form that can survive in the environment for up to months. And then there's the much more fragile form called the trophozoites, which look like this. And those evil little buggers are what cause the damage inside the body. And once these guys are eaten, the cyst will travel all the way to a part of the small intestines called the duodenum, or the duodenum for those of you in the UK. The cyst will then burst and let the trophozoites out. And then these little evil buggers are going to suction themselves to the actual lining of the small intestines. And because I know all of you are very interested in science, the duodenum is the very first portion of the small intestines that connects directly to the stomach. And the small intestines contain these little hair-like projections called villi and they Jesus see they look like hair and these little hair like projections are responsible for absorbing nutrients in digested food and the problem with Giardia is that when they attach to the small intestines they not only damage the intestinal cells but they damage those little hair like projections as well and that damage not only leads to difficulties digesting and absorbing food but also causes the small intestines to secrete a whole bunch of more juices and this will lead to the diarrhea that is oh so common with Giardia infections. Even though diarrhea is the most common clinical sign that we'll see with Giardia, there are a couple of other clinical signs that we can see depending on how severe the infection is and surprisingly a good chunk of pets with Giardia are actually asymptomatic. Thankfully, Giardia is a pretty easy thing for us to test for, and we have a whole bunch of different tools that we can use to do so. Now, when it comes to treating Giardia, sometimes that's a lot easier said than done. In theory, Giardia is very simple for us to treat because we have a whole bunch of different antiparasitic medications that take care of these little buggers. And pets that are either asymptomatic or have very mild cases may not even need treatment at all. That being said, the reason Giardia can be very difficult and take months to treat is because some of the different strains of Giardia can be quite resistant to the medications we have. 